So we're here at a UCF right now. And what we like to do pretty much is come out here on Fridays from around 1130 to 1230 and just share the gospel with people. Uh, UCF is the University of Central Florida. And so we just like to take time to talk to people, get to know them, share the gospel, interact. So we pray the Lord would give us uh, good fruit today here at the campus. Hi, my name is Edgar. I'm uh, here with the uh, campus ministry with Cornerstone Baptist Church. Uh, we come out here and try to talk to people about the gospel. Are you, do you got a few minutes to spare by any chance? Sure, why okay. not, yeah. So essentially what we're doing is we just want to talk to people about the gospel. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in any type of religious organization or anything like that currently? No, not currently. Okay, no. uh, have you been, have you gone to church when you were young? Yeah. Did your parents go to church? Are they churchgoers? Yeah. Okay, so what maybe at this point in your life has uh, kept you or restrained you from getting involved? Um, I don't I guess time, I guess. Yeah. Time, like in regards to the school and things of that nature? School, yeah. other commitments, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to school here for? Um, biomed, actually. Wow, okay, but I didn't even... I'm actually, um, with the orientation crew. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you're kind of trending along with the rate, or these people here? Yeah, but okay. I'm like finding my own path. Okay. I'm kind of just touring that's, by myself. That's good, that's good. Okay, <laughs> so essentially, um... And what you're studying, um, there's standards. You would agree that there's a, there's a sense where you come here to get an understanding, uh, a standardized set of understandings of how to, and it sounds redundant too, I apologize for the usage no, of the word, on how to execute whatever it is that you want to work for. Would that make sense? Yeah. So you would agree that, that there's a sense where there's a way to arrive at an objective truth. Is it, you would agree that we as humans have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you agree that we have the ability to come to a conclusion of what's right and wrong. Yes. Standardized so, yeah. for clarity. I mean, some things are, are great, right? Because yeah. we're not going to talk every single area. Um, having said that, what is then your personal uh, understanding of, of the Bible? Do you believe the Bible's true? The Bible um, is just a compiled document of men's opinions? What are your thoughts about the Bible? Um, I think it's a good guideline to follow through life mm -hmm. there's certain things that you know it's it's good to follow basically mm -hmm. and yeah it's like an outline for how mm -hmm. to live your life so if if the bible because it does tell us that for example it starts with the idea that god is holy mm -hmm. that god is just that god's created all things um you know by his power by his might uh, how far do you go with with the guideline says based on your your description of what you think it is <laughs> honestly i can't tell you mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not really like that in depth. Mm -hmm. I don't really study the Bible okay. myself. Okay. But I appreciate that. I think that at the end of the day, what you're telling me is if I had, if I took more time, then I could possibly um, weigh if the Bible would fall under right absolute truth, perhaps, mm -hmm. versus just another book. Yeah, sure. Right. So it would be important. What would be the elements that you look for in a book or a document to be able to certify its Validity. I mean, you would know the difference between fiction and, you know, a documentary. You would know the difference between fiction and a historical book. How, how do you, what are the things that you look for to be able to tell the difference? Um, I, I got to go in a couple minutes, yeah. but um, I guess how it applies to me mm -hmm. and how my life and how I can relate to it. I guess mm -hmm. that's how I would see it as true or mm -hmm. not true. So let's say that uh, you, for whatever reason, end up, Believing that, and this is a little while, so bear with me, <laughs> that Harry Potter is your standard of truth. Okay. Would that be normal? For my life, mm -hmm. no. Okay. For anyone else's life? I don't think so. No. Right. Why would you come to that conclusion? Um, it's, a, it's a little out there. Isn't it? Yeah. So, so in a sense, would it be best to say that it's not how that relates or I interpret it to myself? It's whether it's true or not. Because it's irrelevant if someone says, listen, I speak to unicorns and little green men mm -hmm. we know that that's not true yeah. and so to let someone believe that uh, could be dangerous in some cases i know i've heard mm -hmm. people that say i killed my children because god told me or i did this right those things are those things are serious yeah, yeah so yeah. in regards to, to truth you you would understand that there's a certain thing there's a certain way to arrive to objective empirical information obviously you're in school and you can't pass the test unless you remember <laughs> and put to mind those empirical truths and the word of god pretty much is the same way and, and I appreciate the honesty. You said, I haven't really studied it. I haven't really taken time to look at it. Um, and really what it comes down to for us to even get to the idea of the gospel is because you're maybe um, ignorant at this point of what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. If you're ignorant of what the laws of the state of Florida are in regards to transit, uh, 
restrictions and you and you just break a law, would you still be held accountable? Yeah. Why? Because it's the law. It's but that wouldn't be fair though, because you didn't know about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially if it's like a brand new law. Mm -hmm. Did you know there's a new law right now that says if you're driving too slow under the speed limit, they'll give you a ticket? I knew that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that I found that out. I was like, okay, but not that I, you know, like to drag along, but I didn't. I was like, man, what if there's an elderly person and they didn't know about it, right? Yeah. So you're saying that even though people might not be aware of an executed law, right, that is binding us in order, you're saying that it would be right for us to be held to the standard of that law or that truth. Sure. Yeah. Right. So the same thing happens with the Bible. Same thing happens for everything else that you're not even aware of, like the laws of gravity being applied to you right now, mm -hmm. the way that your circular system, everything works. And so the Bible says that you and I have a problem, and the problem is sin. So yeah. the issue is a uh, good person, right? You, would you consider to be, yourself to be a good person? Yeah. Scale of 1 to 10. Listen carefully. Zero is Hitler, Stalin, all the crazy people you can come up with. Mm -hmm. 10 is like, you're the reason why people come to UCF. Where do you fall on a scale of 1 to 10? I, I can't, I, I, I don't know. Take a shot at it. Come on. You measure yourself. 7. 7. Okay, why 7 and not a 2? I don't know. It's just, I guess, how I live my life and mm -hmm. in regards to how, I guess, people that were a 2 live their lives. So in a sense, what you're saying is subjectively, I'm going to measure myself uh, in relationship to my counterparts, right? The people here or everyone else you know. And that in your mind validates a 7. Yes? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Three questions real quick, and we're going to finish this up, okay. but, but I appreciate your time. Yeah. Three questions that the Bible gives us. There's more, but I'm just going to give three on how we can understand if we really are as good as we think we are. If we really are a seven, and maybe perhaps we could be a zero, but you would say, well, I would never be a zero because I live a life different than others. Number one, how many lies have you told since you were born? How many lies what? Have you told since you were born? I can't tell you. <laughs> Is yeah. that because you lost track of counting them or just because of the fact that there's too many? I mean, they're not like big, serious lies, mm -hmm. but I mean, I guess I, could, I lost track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's say, um, does it matter the size of the lie or the person you're lying to? It's still a lie, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we do agree that there's a difference between if you lie to me or if you lie to someone else you know, or if you lie to a police officer or if you lie to a, a, a circuit judge. But what if you lie to the Supreme Justices? That's the problem. Right. So the issue is not just the lie, it's who you lied against. The Bible says that because we all lie against on, against God who's holy, the Bible says that the penalty for lying in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, and I can give you that later, it gives a list of sins and those people who practice those sins will go to hell and be tortured and lying is all there. So that's one thing that we would say, well, I you've I lied. I have to go. I'm okay. sorry. Like, I'm running late on time. All right. Well, let me, let me give you this uh, track. Please. It's uh, nice yeah. and pretty. Consider it really much is going to talk about the, the same thing we're talking about, God's law. Yeah. And I encourage you, you seem young, vibrant, thinking. Think about not just what you're doing now, because mm -hmm. if everything you're doing now is not going to change your position before God in eternity, mm -hmm. then is there anything validating what you're really doing? I'm not saying it's not important, no, but no, in I the spectrum of saying, eternity, yeah. right? You would say, well, man, I should have considered this a little better. And my encouragement is not to recruit anybody to church, but just to get you thinking about spiritual things, which right, usually right, we right. don't. The only time we do think about spiritual things, somebody died yeah. or there was an accident yeah. or something tragic like 9-11, right? But maybe your life is not like that. I would hope not. That's a very tragic life. But consider what it's going to happen because there's a sense of truth. And maybe you're not informed by it. It doesn't stop being true. Thank you so much. You've been very kind. Thanks. Take it was care. nice talking to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a real encouraging conversation. Uh, short on time, but that's usually what happens when we're here at UCF. So uh, we're just going to pray that we can get another conversation. And I appreciate the fact that she was willing to talk and be open about, you know, the fact that she hasn't read the Bible because usually people are not willing to admit that. Some people are just predisposed with a particular form of thinking, atheistic, agnostic, or if they're in a cult. So it's, it's always an encouragement to talk to someone who's willing at least uh, to be able to have some sense of truth on, on what it is that we're, you know, the fact that we're sharing the gospel with them.